welcome to my dear student teachers to the course paper to the course knowledge and curriculum the first unit concept of knowledge and here we are in the third module in the third module we are going to learn about the types of knowledge that are available being teachers it is very essential for us to understand what knowledge is its meaning definition characteristics and everything and we should also know about the types of knowledge this 1.3 types of knowledge module is being presented to you by dr v girija professor hod uh, professor and hod of school of education ways institute of science technology and advanced studies let us look into the types of knowledge there are various knowledges that are available and it can be classified as proced procedural knowledge at first what procedural knowledge is all the information that is needed to accomplish certain tasks and participate in certain activities is considered to be the procedural knowledge in education this is often generalized as a group of specific strategies and skills conceptual knowledge let us understand what conceptual knowledge is when knowledge is based on concepts that drive factual pieces of information from the world around us it is called conceptual knowledge and focuses on the regrouping big in the understandings and corresponding relationships among them conceptual knowledge highlights connections between the concepts themselves knowledge categories selected in school education all curricula emerge from ideas about what should be taught and learned and how and how such teaching and learning might best be undertaken and then certified as a result the fundamental question lies behind the prescription and development of all curricula is often seen as what knowledge is of most worth because it is the knowledge that is uh, that is of most worth that education should seemingly reflect in its ideological or philosophical aspect much curricular thought seek for knowledge categories in school education to articulate reasoned starting points for one or other for another form of curriculum such work can accept the framework of contemporary understanding of the scope and nature of education and schooling it can be critical seeking to articulate the hidden assumptions around such categories as race gender and class that are the that have driven and drive schooling in a inappropriate even morally wrong directions however looked more analytically the curriculum of the school reflects the layered cultural understandings of what is considered necessary for young people to know and or experience if they are to take their place in the social and cultural order thus the central component of a pervasive modern institution the curriculum is necessarily a part of the sociological and cultural ambiguities within societies as such the scope and nature of the curriculum are viewed as critically important for teachers parents cultural critics interest groups and the employers of the graduates of the school as the curriculum as an idea is seen through the eyes of all such groups it becomes a mirror that reflects different visions of the society and culture and the tensions within the society around say the proper nature of the work of schooling and or status attainment and employment possibilities as a result inevitable and unresolved differences of viewpoint uh, categorically char characteristically surface around all discussions of the curriculum as a symbol of both the formative uh, both the normative order for education and of the quality and character of what uh, schools are understanding and for these reasons the history of curriculum thinking and practice is marked on the one hand by popular and professional conflict and debate about what the curriculum should be and how teaching should be undertaken and on the other hand by racialization of the good and or bad consequences of one or the other curriculum for what for example should the curriculum that is most appropriate for young people should be based upon the needs of the economy for human resources national or international ideals the need for societal and cultural change or preservation ameliorating pervasive distinctions of gender and race the set of perennially essential and fundamental forms of knowledge and ways of thinking the forms of a life that is most worth living as a result of the competition between such starting points that is political 
cultural and policy conflict around what should be authoritatively prescribed in curriculum and how teaching should be undertaken and how schooling should be organized. When we look into the kinds of knowledge, the knowledge depending upon its nature is categorized into six types with a priori knowledge, a posteriori knowledge, explicit knowledge, tacit knowledge, propositional knowledge and non-propositional knowledge. Let us look into detail about what a priori, a priori knowledge means. The Latin phrase a priori means from the earlier. It implies that a person can derive knowledge from the world without needing to experience it. This is better, know, better known as reasoning. That is to say that a priori knowledge or justification is independent of experience or empirical evidences. Detective reasoning forms the basis for arriving at conclusions of in a priori knowledge. A posteriori knowledge, philosophy of idealism gives prominence for a priori knowledge and a priori knowledge finds its place in subjects like metaphysics, economics, astronomy and mathematics. A posteriori knowledge, the Latin phrase a posteriori uh, means from the later. This is a reference uh, to experience and using inductive reasoning to gain knowledge. That is to say in a posteriori knowledge, we first gain experiences through our five senses and then subject to them to logical reasoning that is inductive reasoning and reflection to derive understanding. In other words, it could be said that a posteriori knowledge or justification is dependent on experience or empirical evidence as with most aspects of science that is evolution and personal knowledge. In philosophy, a posteriori knowledge um, is sometimes used interchangeably with empirical knowledge which is knowledge based on observations. The naturalists and pragmatists accept a posteriori knowledge only. Now let us move on to look into what explicit knowledge means and tacit knowledge means. Let us first look into the explicit knowledge. Explicit knowledge is similar to the a priori knowledge in that it is more formal and perhaps more reliable. It is knowledge that is recorded and communicated through media like libraries and databases. Anything from the arts to the sciences can have elements that could be expressed clearly and they constitute explicit knowledge. Now let us move on to tacit knowledge. Tacit knowledge is about the facial expressions, body movements and gestures, body languages etc. may communicate information. Knowledge thus communicated non-verbally is otherwise known as tacit knowledge. Tacit knowledge is opposite to explicit knowledge and explicit knowledge is easily transferable whereas tacit knowledge is very difficult, almost impossible to be communicated. Tacit knowledge could be communicated through consistent and extensive relationship or contacts over a long period of time. Propositional knowledge and non-propositional knowledge. Let us look into the propositional knowledge first. It is also known as descriptive or declarative knowledge and explicitive knowledge and tacit knowledge or propositional or non-propositional knowledge respectively. Propositional knowledge is the knowledge which is the one which can literally be expressed in propositions. The key attribute to propositional knowledge is that it states something is true. It is knowledge of something and not about how to do something. Hmm. Non-propositional knowledge, it is just the opposite of propositional knowledge and be used to used or applied in specific problems and situations. For example, you can learn a, uh, you can learn to use a computer but may not know how to program a computer. Ways of acquiring knowledge, the observation and experience by reasoning and logical thinking, by testimony, by revelation or the ways of acquiring knowledge. Let us look into them one by one. The first one is about uh, acquiring knowledge through ex uh, observation and experience. This may be uh, more or less sophisticated, ranging from a simple, I saw to carefully design controlled experimentation, like reason and the logic, taking other knowledge as data, others knowledge as data, by logical operations, knowledge, can be inferred. For example, the theoretical construct, the electron is deri derived by logical inferences from observations and experiment. Such knowledge being derivative can be better than the knowledge upon which it is founded. 
Modeling a situation sometimes allows those with hands-on view point to learn how to do something. This is pragmatic approach. This pragmatic approach is often seen in computer programming. Let us move on to the other way of acquiring knowledge, testimony. Knowledge based on the acceptance of testimony involves accepting what others say. For example, I only know what Kent is a country of England that the First World War was horrendous. This seems to be a common way we get knowledge but is seen by philosophers as problematic. Let us look into the other way of acquiring knowledge by way of authority and revelation. Authority. Knowledge based on authority may rely upon the reputation of an individual such as Aristotle or Einstein or perhaps an institutional authority such as that of the Roman Catholic Church or Oxford University. Note that an authority may adopt knowledge upon other criteria such as divine revelation or observation as well as upon authority. Revelation. Many people believe knowledge may be obtained via revelation or even divine revelation, which may be directly from God or another God spirit, perhaps conveyed through a religious text or text such as the Bible, although there is no evidence to support this claim. 